Okay, in this chapter, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to start with our open position pentatonics, with like the chords we've known forever that we thought of as being for beginning playing, for being when we didn't know that much, and that's true, and then we moved up the fretboard. We're gonna, if we're going to, though, relearn the fretboard and see things in this way of like, if this chord, then this pentatonic scale makes sense to start in the open position. I also like to start in the open position because it's a little bit humbling for people. Do you know how to play a D minor pentatonic in the open position? Maybe, maybe not. So it's, it's funny, it's a thing, our brain, our little brains don't like that, like, that there's notes that we don't touch. And so it's a fun challenge. And overtones in the open position. Are just delicious. Like I actually like I would actually be very happy with a five fret guitar. I would be totally fine. So that's why we start with this. And so we're gonna go over like C A G E D. Notice caged. It's kind of like a foreshadow that like hey these shapes that we're gonna learn going up the fretboard and then how to like let them soak in. We're gonna start in the open position. If this chord, then this pentatonic. And then once I've covered a couple of those. Then I'm going to combine a couple of them together and play a, a very, very simple kind of chill, cinematic kind of solo because this, is, this stuff isn't about hot licks. This isn't about what our fingers can do. It's about what our brains can do. Join me. Let's play a C chord. We all know this by now. That's how you play a C chord. I don't need to tell you how to do that. The next thing we want to do is we want to look at the open position major pentatonic that goes with that C chord. Let's check it out. Let's come back down. And the eternal truth here is that for the rest of your life, every time you play this chord, or any chord that ultimately looks like that, those notes are available to you as fill options or even lead options. Um, and yeah, you can probably recognize that is literally my girl. And so to put this information in our heads and in our hands, we want to combine it with rhythm. So let's take probably the most common chord strumming pattern that there is. I mean, I've taught thousands of lessons and thousands of songs. I swear this pattern is everywhere. Hence, I name it the ubiquitous pattern. Down, down, up, up, down. Notice, I don't know if you can see on camera, but I am tapping my left foot. I'm actually stomping my left heel. Because, yeah, groove it. Yeah, a wide swath of mid-tempo to up-tempo songs. That's going to be, that's the default setting. Um, and, yeah, I think it's important for us guitar players to have names for the strum patterns that we learn. It, it's our job. It's our job to know chords and grooves just as much as it is to know all the tasty, tasty scales. So to put this stuff all together in a way that's going to kind of teach your brain what's going on and maybe utilize it later on when making up songs, loops, playing with other people, whatever musical things we may do, we want to do one bar of strumming and one bar of very simple quarter note fills from that. I said quarter note fills. So we don't want to do the guitar player thing of mm -mm -mm -mm. This is all about retraining our brain to control our fingers. So check it, it's super simple. It's very humble. trying to impress you right now. That's all it has to be. So that's one thing you can do. You can just, with no loop going, with no backing track going, you can just calmly and relaxedly just strum a C. And the reason I, I recommend practicing this way is because it has us working all three elements of music at once. Rhythm, harmony, melody. Rhythm is the groove, 
harmony is the chord, melody is the fill, as opposed to we know, we know what we do. We learn a scale and we kind of noodle around with it. Super fun. I will never tell someone to not noodle, but if we want to um, start to rewire our brain to see, you have a chord, you have a pentatonic scale. Boop, 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 boop. They're right there. They're right there next to each other. Now, just to show you how it will sound perhaps in a track, let's go ahead and pull up that backing track and I will play along with that using this kind of idea. from the backing track. Keep it rolling though. Now just play. Still quarter notes though. Okay, so in conclusion, in review, what you, what you want to do, you got your C chord, you got your ubiquitous strum pattern. So assignment one would be, yeah, ubiquitous with quarter note fills. And yeah, let go. Let go of your guitar player. Honestly, it's musician desire to impress yourself or anybody. This isn't about that. You will not learn a single hot lick from this series. What you will learn is, is a, a rewiring of your brain to see chord. You know, a chord is actually an opportunity of notes. It's not this tight thing. I know what we, what we all learned of. That's super cool, super fun. But what, we're, what I'm trying to do here is show you that it all can happen in the same place. And so to make it happen in the same place, it has to be simple. For now, for now. It can get more complicated, but why would I do that with the first lesson in the series?